found the one, you should never give her up. I think it's the way life changes when in love, yeah. I hi guys welcome back to my channel if it's your first time here welcome i know i haven't posted in a while but your baby girl is back yes i'm back i had to take a break but i'm back um today's video is a tutorial of this wrap top and uh, without further ado let's just get right into the video these are the materials that you'll be needing for this tutorial the first step is to make sure your fabric is on fold. I folded mine using the largest part of my body, which is my bust, plus about 3 inches allowance. After doing that, you are going to measure the length of the top. Mine was, mine was 19 inches plus 1 inch M allowance, that is 20. So I'm marking that and I'll be connecting that together with a straight line. For this tutorial, we'll be measuring the back piece first because that is what we'll use to cut the front piece. After marking the straight line, I'm going to start with my shoulder measurement which is 14 inches. That divided by 2 is 7 inches, so I'm marking that plus half an inch seam allowance. Next, I'm marking my neck width I used 4 inches because why not <laughs> you can use more or you can use less depends on how wide you want the neck to be and after marking that i will drop down at the shoulder measurement by one inch to make the shoulder slope connecting that to the four inches mark of the neck width from the shoulder slope i'm measuring eight inches which is half the measurement of my ham hole and I'm connecting that to the shoulder slope, the straight line. Next, I'm measuring the neck depth. And since it's the back piece, I decided to use 1.5 inches. And I'm connecting that to the initial 4 inches width that I marked. So this will create a neckline for the back. You can use a curved ruler like I'm doing right now or a pattern master if you have one or anything curvy to mark, I mean to connect those lines. Now we are going to start with the vertical measurement. So I took my bust measurement which is 10 inches and marked that and connected it with a straight line. And then I measured my waist measurement, shoulder to waist, which is 16 inches. And I also connected that with a straight line. After that, I decided to indicate the one inch hem allowance that I left. So that place is going to stand as the length measurement. After taking the vertical measurements, we are now going to take the horizontal measurement. Starting with the bust, mine is 36 divided by 4, that's 9 inches, plus 1 inch for ease and 1 and a half inches for seam allowance. You could use 1 inch if you want, but I decided to choose um, use 1.5 inches. I'm repeating the same for my waist, which is 32 divided by 4, that is 8 inches, plus 1 inch, one inch ease and 1 and a half same allowance and I used the same measurement for the length of the top after doing that you connect all the dots together For the arm hole, I just measured my arm hole measurement and marked the middle to form the arm hole curl. After doing that, make sure you go over your measurements again before cutting. Once that is done, you are going to open the fabric white. Remember, it's the back piece. Here I'm measuring how wide I want my tie, like my string to be. I wanted it to be like about 3 inches. 
so i'm marking that on the fabric and i'm also marking few inches away from the side seam i used to, i also used three inches for this part then i connected from the shoulder from the shoulder to that particular point that i marked you can make yours a straight line or a curvy line the curvier the line is the more cleavage that will be revealed so you can make yours curvy or straight now i'm folding the line at that point i'm just folding it because i'm not using a pattern paper if i was using a pattern paper, i wouldn't need to fold but because i'm using the back piece to the front i just folded that line and i placed it on another piece of fabric that is on fold because we need two pieces of this for the front part now i'm cutting out the shape and this will give me two different pieces for the front and that should look like this so when you're done cutting you should have three pieces now two for the front and one for the back next we are going to cut the facing for the fabric both the front pieces and the back pieces for the front piece i'm just tracing out the neckline and i'm measuring three inches wideness for the facing i usually like my face to be three inches wide you can make yours a little bit shorter or wider once you're done marking your three inches width you can now connect it to form a straight line and then cut it out so this will be the facing for the front i'll be cutting two pieces of this because i have two front pieces so two facings for the two front pieces this is me showing you how to place the facing and i pinned it down so that after stitching you'll be able to see what it will look like once you're done so it should look like this yeah i'm cutting the facing for the back but since the back is not in pieces i made sure my fabric was on fold to cut the facing then i placed the back piece on it then i traced out the neckline as i'm showing you here and also measure the same three inches for the width of the facing and then i cut it out yeah i'm just marking that three inches to form the shape of the neckline to follow the shape of the neckline After cutting, you can see placing it on it just aligns well with the neck. Yeah, I've gone ahead to cut two tie strings for the two front pieces that are 45 by 3 inches wide. One for each piece. Now for the sleeve of the dress, make sure your fabric is on fold as I'm doing here. And then you measure the length of your sleeve. I used 10 inches that is including the hemming allowance because I wanted a short sleeve. You can make yours longer, you can make yours shorter, but this length was perfect for me. So after marking my 10 inches mark, I connected it with a straight line. From that line that I marked, I'm going to measure the 4 inches constant for ammo measurement so that is what i'm doing right now after doing that i'm also going to form a straight line with that on this four inches line i'm marking my ammo measurement divided by two that is eight inches so i'll be marking that plus one inch seam allowance And then I'll come down to the base of the sleeve. There I'll mark my sleeve circumference. 
my short sleeves are confined divided by two lawns one inch seam allowance and then I'll connect that together now I'm going to draw a curve I'm going to use a freehand method to draw a curve from the top line to where that um, arm O constant that four inches line is just like I'm doing right now after that I connected my allowance line together and then I cut out the sleeve we'll be cutting two pieces of this because we have we need two sleeves I just place this on another folded part of the fabric and I cut it out so this is what the back piece looks like after joining the facing I also top stitch on the facing side so that the neck was going to relax very well you can also give it a good press to make it stay flat I did the same for the two front pieces I joined the facing together and also did a top stitch you can press it also to make it stay flat and nice then I went ahead to join the shoulders of the two pieces both the front and the back and now I'm pinning the side so that I'll be able to join this side using my one and a half seam allowance that I left so I'll be joining the two sides like that I've gone ahead to join the sides and also hem to the bottom of the top. Now I'm attaching the tie string to the front pieces. I had to line my own because my fabric was not enough. You can double yours if you want. Yeah, I'm pinning the tie string right sides facing right sides of the of one side of the front piece, and I also do the same using the second tie string. So once you are done stitching, this is what it should look like at the end. Repeat the same for the second side and it should look like that. Make sure to give it a good press so everything stays flat and nice. I've already gone ahead to end the bottom of my sleeves. So I'll be attaching the sleeve to the top now. So we have come to the end of this tutorial. Please just give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and if you have questions please leave them in the comment section if you have video suggestions please do that too in the comment sections and i'll see you guys in my next video bye